Hey, 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 it's Ken, Heavenly Harvest Homestead, and today I'm in the kitchen, and I'm going to be making some strawberry jam. So, let's roll. Alright, so what I'm going to be doing is, uh, I got, um, let me show you what I got going on here, here. Let's see, uh, there we go. Okay, so what I got here, I have six pounds of strawberries, they're the, uh, two pound packs that you get from Walmart. I was a little bit late out on the game getting to the uh, fresh strawberries. I had uh, two stands that were right down the street from us uh, that I had bought some earlier. We went by there last week and they had already pulled all their plans out. So at least these are still from the United States. I think these are out of Lake City, if I remember right. Nope, these are Winter Haven. Okay, so. Either way, this is the only place you can get strawberries right now is from Florida that stay in the United States because everybody else's has already uh, done their, their deal. So that's one thing I wanted to talk about is when you buy stuff, particularly produce, I, want to, I always try to support local farms if I can. And if I can't, then at least I try to support farms in the United States. So when I go to the grocery store, I try not to buy anything that is from outside of the United States. That means that during the winter time, I don't eat plums, I don't eat pears, I don't eat apples. The only one that I ever eat probably that would be from another country is bananas just because the United States doesn't grow bananas real well. That's probably the only one. But I buy it from a reputable company that I know is going to be trustworthy. So what I want to challenge you guys with is do the 100 mile challenge. What that means is don't buy anything. Try to this. Try to do this. Buy everything that you need that you don't grow already within 100 miles of your house maximum. What that does is it gives the local farmers some business and it helps the economy when you shop, shop locally. And 100 miles is a pretty big area. So I just wanted to share that with you. So let's get started. Okay, so what I'm going to need is my strawberries, my three pound, six pounds of strawberries, six cups of sugar, and you can use any kind of sugar. I had uh, white sugar around because I have to feed my bees with this. So I got this around, but normally I use the uh, pure cane sugar, but we didn't have enough. Also, going to need four tablespoons of lemon juice. Not fresh lemon juice, not squeezed, just lemon juice out of here. The squeezed one's a little bit too acidy and it'll uh, break up the, the uh, mixture. And now, if you got two big Granny Smith's apples, that will be great. But these are kind of small, so I'm going to use two and a half, and I'm going to eat the other half. So you need two large or three small, or two and a half small ones. And what that, these are going to do is provide the pectin. So we're not going to put any pectin in this, because the uh, apples do the job. And how you know this is, you ever had an apple pie fall apart? No, because of the apples. All right, so I'm going to show you how, what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut all the, the tops off these strawberries. I'm going to put them in the food processor. I'm going to get them all mixed up. I'm going to cut up the apples, put them in there as well. And if you don't have a food processor, you can also use a, a potato masher um, to squash them out. Basically, you want to get them into, you don't want to make them into a puree, but you want to leave them in little chunks, but you don't want whole big giant to make uh, strawberries in the jam. Alright, so let me uh, zoom you in here and I'll show you what I'm going to be doing. Alright, first thing you need to have is a really sharp knife. Alright, dull knives will cut you. You'll get hurt worse with a dull knife than you will with a sharp knife. Alright, and all I'm going to be doing is knocking these tops off and we put them in this, uh, this uh, recycling bowl. I did uh, I cut up some uh, cucumbers earlier to make some pickles. Beth's going to be doing some, making, making some pickles pretty soon. Um, so I cut them all up with the processor as well because this, this processor has a neat little thing right here where you can adjust the, the slice depth 
you know, just by adjusting this, so you can change how the how thicker thin the slices are. Well, that was pretty cool. And it's the first time I tried it out, and she was a little bit skeptical, but then all of a sudden I brought her, I brought her something. She's like, "Holy mackerel, that's awesome!" So she's hurting right now. Her back's bothering her. So y'all pray for her, please, that her back will heal quickly. All right. So we're just gonna take the tops off and drop them into here. I've already washed these, so in case you're worried about that. And I'm going to chop up all six pounds of these and put them in this. Now, six pounds are not going to fit in this, so I'm going to have to cut. I'm going to, have to do one, and then do do another probably until I get them all, and then I'll put them in a pot. So let me get these tops cut off, and then I'll take it to the next step. It looks like one bucket of these fits in my bowl. This is what you look what it looks like. So got big chunks in here. Not quite, it's not pureed. It's got some pretty you know decent chunks in here. So you don't want to turn on full blast and you know turn it into a big old soup. You want to leave it in some consistency.
uh, agenda is to get these apples processed. So what I use for that is an apple core. I've gone through a couple of these. These things, they last me about, probably about a year and a half. We eat a lot of apples. So what you do is you just line the, the little bullseye up on the core. You try to get your apple as straight as possible. That way it will go down straight through. And that's one thing about Granny Smith apples. They are hard. here, just throw them in the bin, because I already know I'm going to only need half of one of these, so well, that works out there. Next one, and I, I don't peel, I can't peel apple, whole apples very good, that's why I do them this way, because you need to take the peel off, and I'm horrible at trying to peel apples, I end up wasting half the apple trying to peel it off, so this works so much better. and just take the peel off the back side here. Alright, I'm just going to chop these apples up. Now, I don't need to grind these up because these will break down pretty easy because they are apples. So I'm just going to chunk them up in here. Alright, there you go. Give it a stir. Stir those in a little bit. Now sugar. So six cups of sugar. Now you don't have to use six cups of sugar if you're high on, if you don't like a lot of sugar. You can use three cups, two cups. In fact, you, you really want, the sugar all it does is give some sweetness. But I like my jam a little bit sweet, especially when I don't have strawberries that are not right out of the farm. So six cups. Stir that in. Go ahead and put your fire on medium to medium high. We're going to actually be bringing this up to a boil.
thing is my lemon juice. Four tablespoons of lemon juice. One, two, three, four. Make sure you keep stirring this. Do not let it set because it will burn on the bottom and then you'll have a big nasty yucky mess. Keep stirring. I want to give a shout out to Homestead Heart. This is actually her recipe. Um, she got it out of the the ball book and then made her little twist on it and it is really good really really good I'm going to set my uh, my cannon water on to uh, come to a boil as well, so I can start getting my jars ready. Okay, so now we've got the strawberries up to a boil, and we're going to boil them for 20 to 25 minutes. I'm taking my lids and putting them in a little pot behind the behind us, and I'm going to put my jars into the canner pot and get them warmed up. Because in 20, 20, 25 minutes, we're going to be loading these jars up. dozen jelly size jars. These are the, uh, the half pint jars. I'm going to make a dozen of these. This is a point where you do not want to stop stirring because once it starts boiling, the sugars will stick to the bottom where it's real hot and you'll end up with a caramelized jelly which does not taste very good at all. It smells yummy though. All right, so, <laughs> Whew. it's amazing what uh, one little bit of extra apple will do. So I had to change over the pot. So I guess uh, that's a learning experience because, you know, the I guess that five quart pot, I needed a six quart pot. <laughs> oh, man. Cooking is an adventure, let me tell you. He 
get these things back up to a boil again. We'll bump the time back up so we can boil for 20 minutes again. Hopefully. Well, this will give me a chance to get my uh, jars in the water over here. Alright, get them doing their thing. It's back up to a boil again, so I'm going to add about four minutes back on this. It's it took about that long for me to get all this stuff shifted over. Alright, time will be going off in 20 seconds. So what we're going to do next is, once, 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 this get, once the timer goes off, I'm going to put a lid on this and let it set for about five minutes, just to let it kind of cool down a little bit, and then while I get my jars all ready and everything, there's the timer. All right, turn that off, turn it off. Let that chillax for a minute while I get my jars ready. All right, got my ladle, got my funnel. I just I got this funnel uh, a couple months ago, actually about six months ago. I've used it a couple times. And I like it because it's got a lot more surface area to pour into, so you don't make too big a mess. Because I don't like to make messes with Beth's kitchen. Beth's kitchen. But I guess that's too late because I've already made a little bit of a mess. All right, you also need a towel. Put your jars on. You don't want to set it on the on the counter because they'll uh, they'll bust. Trust me, I know about that. <laughs> Just take my word for it. All right, so I got my towel here. Got my rings. We'll set these rings back here behind here because I need to make me some room to put my pot. Be back with you in five minutes when it's set up. All right, let's get this filling these jumpers up here. Get a little jar dealy. Do them three at a time just to uh, keep things safe. Now we need one inch of head, head space, so whew, I ain't gonna touch a jar, but you can see this goes right down, so I'm gonna fill it up right to the bottom of this blue. Much in that one, a little bit back. Got a little results on that one. Should 
one inch of head space. This is why I only do three at a time just so I can get these all balanced out right. starting to congeal. That looks good. Alright, get my rings. Now, before I do that, I almost made a mistake. Before you do any lids, you need to make sure you clean the rim. Because you don't want anything on this rim that's going to separate the jar from that lid. Otherwise, it won't seal right. Did you uh, push it down to get out the bubbles? All right, so I'm just going to get a paper towel. i got some little bit of white vinegar back here. I'm just going to dip that in there and squeeze it out. Make sure you squeeze it out. Don't don't put leave a lot of it on here because you end up getting vinegar in your jars. I'm just gonna wipe the rims. Now, last thing before you put the lid on here, you also need to take and make sure you have no bubbles in your jar. So I'm just gonna take a butter knife. And I'm just gonna stick down here and make sure I stir out any bubbles that might be in in here. How pretty that is. Beautiful. Beautiful gem. Alright, set these to the back side here. Get the next three three out. Just like that. Alright, let me finish these up and then I'll show you what the next part is. Alright, so I've got all my jars in the canner, water bath, getting the water bath up to temperature. You want it to come to a boil. Once you get it to the boil, put the lid on, let it sit for five minutes. And then take it off the fire, take the lid off, and then set the jars back on the on that cloth so they can rest. And then what's your you want to hear that great sound of that sound as soon as the jars begin to seal. And I wound up with about a pint left over. So I'm just going to put a plastic lid on this, put it in the refrigerator, and we'll start with this one. Plastic lid. Now I am going to put this on the counter and let it cool down because if you jam this in the refrigerator, change the temperature, the jar might bust. So, I'll tell you this about this little silicone one. See, one of the things that's how easy it cleans up, and then when you get ready to put it in the jar, in the drawer, it collapses down. It fits in the drawer nice and small, unlike 
this this giant thing and see the difference. You know, this thing gets caught all the time. So 